Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel. Today's video is another episode in my Get a Jump on Christmas series. If you've been following along, you know that this year I am determined to get my Christmas cards started this summer so that I have more time to relax during the holidays. Well, maybe not relax, but at least some time to get some other things done. I will add the link to the first couple of videos in the series down in the YouTube description box below. But for today, we are focusing on the Hero Arts holiday release. This is a fantastic holiday release that features lots of fun stamps, dies, stencils, and I'm even going to share a Hero Arts paste. So let's take a quick look at the supplies that I'll be using today from the latest Hero Arts release. First up, I was excited that Hero Arts has decided to release their reactive inks in the ink cube size. These packs come with four different colors in the pack. And the thing that I love about reactive inks is that it's got both the dye and pigment properties. So it sits a little bit above the paper and it reacts with water. This is the poinsettia pattern stencil. I I love this kind of graphic pattern and you see the little squares at the top you could rotate this and create lots of different patterns with it as well you can use the hero paste with it too this is their new paste that adds dimension you can add colors to it you can add glitter to it it's a really great paste the thing that I really like about this is that it dries relatively quickly it has kind of a different texture and you'll see it when we work with it later in the video hero arts calls these look glass dies so they cut a square window and they cut these intricate designs out along with the window and you can layer them on top of each other which is really fun I also really enjoyed their three by four sets this month those are such a great price point that you can pick up a few use them on tags or cards as well last but not least this fun bold sentiment die now I'm gonna use those supplies to make a few holiday cards to add to my stash so I'm going to start with the C palette of the Hero Hues Reactive inks in the cube size. I love having these reactive inks in the cube size because you can do techniques like this where you swipe the ink cube across the paper. I am using watercolor paper here because I'm going to add a little bit of water droplets to it. But I just love that paint swipe look that you get with little bits of white in between those colors. And I did just use my distress sprayer to pop some water on there and then just use a towel to pick that up so you can see some of that reaction to the water. I waited for it to dry enough that it wasn't going to transfer ink to my Versamark ink pad. You can see I'm picking it up to double check, but you can see that I am just tapping it all over the front of this card panel and then I'm gonna pour Hero Arts Satin Pearl embossing powder on top. This is going to make this really pretty swipes of color turn into a really nice pearlescent background, which I think is gonna be great for the card that I envision with it. So I heat set the whole thing and it's hard to see on the tabletop, but here you can see lots of shine, hint of pearl on all those colors. So I am going to use that little three by four stamp set that's called skating by to say hello and I am going to use the reactive inks to stamp all of the images. I'm just going to make this a very whimsical cute little watercolored image but I'm not going to stress too much about it being perfect. I'm just going to add all these different colors in to make it kind of a frosty winter wonderland look. So I have the ice skating pond, some drifts of snow, and little trees. And now the little people, I'm just going to stamp them in purple. So I'm not stamping everything in black and then coloring it in. This is more of a whimsical cartoonish look, which I think is really cute with these images. And I love that little lamppost. It's so sweet. There's a little snowflake in there, and I'm using the fog reactive ink just to stamp a few snowflakes. And then I'm going to stamp the sentiment in a waterproof ink so that if I do get some water on it, it won't ruin or smudge. I'm working on a glass mat and I'm just smeared some of the reactive ink, the same color that I stamped onto the glass mat and I'm using a water brush just to pick it up and add some coloring to that ice rink. I'm gonna continue through the image, adding little bits of the ink to the mat and then picking it up with the water brush to color in each of the images. 
So I stamped each of the images in a different color. So I'm just using a little bit of the ink to put down and add a little bit of paint to them as well. And for the snow, I am using the blue that I stamped the snow drifts in. I'm just gonna use the very tip of the brush to add little dots to look like sparkling snow or snowflakes falling to the ground. And then I added a little bit of snow to the snowflakes that were in the sky as well. Super, super simple, just playful coloring, not really perfection coloring at all, at all. And then I put three long strips of foam tape behind this, and I'm gonna pop it up on that wintry wonderland background that we created with the swipes of color. I used the same swiping technique and dripping of water to create this rainbow background. And I love these colors, they are so much fun. That's one of the things that I really like about some of those Hero Hues reactive inks is the colors are so bright and they look so pretty when they react with the water. So just a few more ink droplets and then I'm gonna use the fancy dies from Hero Arts to cut out this sentiment. Now it does not cut out the rectangle, so I'm just centering it in the middle of that rainbow panel and holding it in place with some tape and then running it through my die cut machine and popping out all the letters. So I'm going to set these letters aside for another card and for now I'm just gonna put some tape runner on the back of that die cut card. You could use liquid glue here, absolutely. I was being lazy, honestly, and wanted it to just not have to dry and have any dry time. So I'm gonna lay this down on an A2 piece of white cardstock, and I love the way that white pops through that rainbow background. But I wanted to do something for those spots where the A would have a cutout or the R. So I decided to stamp in them. I'm gonna stamp the snowflakes from some of the other stamp sets inside the opening that would be for the A and the R's and the smaller A at the very top. So for the A in Christmas and the R in Christmas, I just use one color, but for the R, I felt like they were crossing over between two colors. With the cubes, it's small enough that you can even ink up that tiny little snowflake with two different colors. So that's another good reason to grab the cubes, even if you have the full size ink pads. I like having that option back and forth. Also, they're smaller for storage, so you might wanna grab the ink cubes instead of the large ones. It's totally you know, your preference, but I like having those small sizes to be able to do small things like this. I am gonna use the stencil, so I'm gonna put a little bit of pixie spray on the back of the stencil, just spray it until it's covered, and then you have to really wait for it to dry. If you put wet pixie spray down on cardstock, it can uh, soften the cardstock and then pull it up when you try and remove it. So really wait until it's dry. It will stay tacky, don't worry, but you definitely want it dry, not wet. I did put the cardstock down on the overspray and then put the stencil right on top of the cardstock. And here is that paste. It is so unique. I've never used a paste that felt like this. It, it almost had a very, very whipped cream cheese consistency. Like it was a little thicker than frosting, but not as thick as obviously real cream cheese. I really liked it. It was easy to make a smooth, even, consistent look on top of the stencil. And you can see here that I got all of that pattern in there and it's raised and dimensional. One thing I will say is it dried really fast. So definitely clean your stencil quickly, but they do say that it just cleans with um, water and soap. So even if it does dry a little bit, you should be able to get it off your stencil and your tools. I did try the rose gold watercolor from Hero Arts mixed in. I didn't end up using this background, but I did wanna show you how beautifully it, the paste colors, and look at that, it comes out fantastic. So the white is really great because you can really make it any color that you want. I also tried using some of the reactive ink in a purple on the mat, just added a couple of droplets of water to get this moving, and then added the paste to it. And again, I'm not gonna use this one today, but 
just so that you know it's very easy to color and it doesn't affect the consistency so much that it creates a lack of dimension. It was beautiful and tons of dimension and lots of color. So I did cut down the white stenciled background to four by five and a quarter and I'm just gonna mat it on some holographic cardstock there. And then I'm gonna use some of the letters that we had cut out from the rainbow background and I'm just adhering them with tape runner to this card panel. So I didn't use the whole phrase, I just used Merry Christmas and then kind of spread it out a little bit so that it fit on the card panel and you can see that fantastic texture in the background. These are the looking glass dies that I was telling you about in the beginning of the video. There's three dies here, so you get two windows that can layer on top of each other, and then you get this little spattering of stars that can be cut out from the background, which you can layer over a different color of cardstock. So I'm going to make a pretty thick card, and I'm gonna have my little window kind of right in the center of this A2 card. You could definitely do a smaller card or a square card or something different, or you could cut windows across a slim line, but I really thought this was kind of a different look for me, so I wanted to try it out. So I am just first cutting the stars out of some Navy Hero Arts cardstock. Now I want those stars to be right behind my little window. So I'm placing the cardstock that I'm gonna cut the window out of over the die and drawing some lines where the top and the bottom of the die will be so that I can then take that die, put it onto that colorful cardstock. The pencil lines won't matter because we'll be covering it up with a window on top of this window. So I'm gonna hold that in place with some tape and then cut that out. And you'll see that now you have the ornaments hanging in front of stars, which that blue is backed with some silver to create those stars. For this one, I am putting the die where it sits behind this window so that I can see where it would go along with the window that I've already cut. Now I'm gonna place that purple cardstock in front of this blue, but I'm just holding that window in front so that I can line it up. And there we go, now I have the two windows lined up on top of each other, the blue with the stars cut out of it, and then some silver in the back. So this purple is the top. I'm gonna put a little sentiment at the top of the window that says Merry Christmas, and I'm gonna stamp that with black ink, and then I'm gonna start layering it up. So I'm gonna use a little bit of tape runner around the outside of the windows, and then a little bit of liquid glue on the ornaments themselves, because I don't want them to peel up in any kind of you know, transition or mailing or anything like that. So just a tiny little bit, maybe that's unnecessary, but especially with this next window, I feel like they're hanging and they're not connected to anything and I don't want them to get ruined or crumpled or anything. So again, just a little bit of liquid glue behind the ornaments and then tape runner around the outside and then adhere it down to the next layer. Now I know this is getting to be kind of a thick card, but it's so unique and I really, really like the way that the small window looks in the center of the A2 card. I think it's just something a little bit different. So the last layer is the little bit of silver glitter cardstock behind those cut out stars in the blue navy. You don't need a whole A2 piece here, especially because it's gonna go on a card base. It's gonna make it even thicker. So I don't know about mailing this one with one stamp, but we'll see, I think it might be fine. So I just did cut down the silver glitter cardstock so I didn't have to use the whole A2 panel and just adhered that right behind that blue. And I just love how intricate these dies cut so beautifully. Here's another one of those three by four stamp sets. And again, there's a little to and from sentiment on here, so these could totally be used for tags. I decided to make a mini slimline card with these, so I'm gonna use all three ornaments on a white piece of cardstock that is cut right now to six by three, but I am gonna cut it down a little bit later so that I can mat it on some cardstock. So first I'm just gonna line these up. I am just using my mini Misty here since it's a small enough slimline card, since it's mini. And once they're lined up, I am going to use three different colors of reactive ink to stamp these little ornaments. So I 
decided to use again those wintry colors the blues and the purples I was really really into that for a bunch of these cards just think it's such a unique color combination and just so much fun for the holidays and I know these are technically technique inks but I really do love the way that they stamp I did double stamp them but that double stamp was more than enough to give a really pretty impression so then I decided that there's these openings in these ornaments that's perfect. They have little images that you can put inside like a snowflake and a reindeer. And then for the center one, I decided to put the sentiment in there. And I think they're so, so cute. Again, these definitely could be used to create some really cute, colorful tags. There's also two sentiments in there. There's the holiday cheer and then there's a Merry Christmas as well. And there are other elements that you can use on the ornaments too. I am using a Pentel Sparkle pen to create the silver line hanging from the top of the card to the little ornament hook. So I'm just using my L ruler from my Misty to help me line up this line and you can see how easily and smoothly that a sparkle pen works with a it's like a silver sparkle and it's super super smooth so I was really happy with that and I like the look of hanging ornaments from the top of the card I also used the pen to color in those ornament caps when I saw how smooth it had drawn the line I figured might as well finish up the caps as well would probably be metallic or silver or gold or whatever so I'm just going to use some tape runner to adhere this I did cut it down to just a little bit smaller than six by three so that I could mat it on some of that hero arts navy cardstock I really love their navy cardstock it's such a really great color and then I just decided that I wanted some snowflakes on this card but I didn't want them as dark as the reindeer so I'm going to use second generation stamping which I don't remember the last time I did this so I have that little scrap of paper I'm just going to stamp off the first time on that little scrap of paper and then I'm going to stamp the second time on the card itself and it just creates a really really nice effect where those snowflakes just kind of are in the background you can tell that they're lighter than the reindeer but it's the same color so it's great that it matches but it's not taking away from the ornaments. I'd love to hear if you're playing along with me and creating your holiday cards early this year. Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't seen them yet, be sure to check out the first couple of videos in my Get a Jump on Christmas series. I'll link to that series over here for you. As always, I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon.